Hi guys, welcome to this episode. Today I'm just going to do a camera review of this Canon 250 entry level um, D. So, um, so let's get started. Um, so I'm just going to really, this is just a video just to showcase to you guys, um, you know, sort of the benefits of having an entry level camera. Um, this new sort of Canon 250D, probably replacing the, you know, sort of 1100s, 300s. Um, so it's a, it's a nice little camera, tell you the truth. I do quite like it. I like the touch screen. I like this LCD screen, which does flip like this. Um, so that's quite nice. And I think it does sort of pivot as well, like a lot of these sort of cameras now do. So if you do some sort of shots from below, and you want to see the shot maybe because of direct sunlight this does sort of pivot around which is quite nice um you know like most sort of cameras nowadays they do have this sort of lcd seats lcd screen or led screen that is touch screen so it's a bit more sort of easier to use tell you the truth so um let's get started so this is a review so i'm going to switch it on so there's your on button and you've got your hot shoe you've got your menu button you've got your you've got your zoom in and out here over here so I've put it into manual mode. You've got um, AV mode, TV mode, aperture mode, um, shutter mode, pro program mode, and auto mode, and scene recognition mode. And that one is, let's have a look. So um, that one is grainy mode, grainy bit black and white mode. So I think that one is. Um, so I'm just gonna put it in manual mode. And let's just have a quick look at this camera. So here's my main menu. So it's to show you. So I'm going to take the cap off. So there's the cap off. It's just a standard lens it's with. So it's an 18 to 55 mil lens, image stabilization. And you've got your image stabilization and your autofocus, like every other DSLR or SLR or mirrorless camera nowadays available to you over here. Um, so I'm just going to click on the menu button. So here's your menu button. So if you click on that, it'll take you to your main menu. If you click back on that, it'll take you to your uh, menu to change your aperture, shutter, ISO, white balance, uh, metering, and um, focal points. So um, if I click on that, it'll take me to my main menu. And if I want to hover through, if I click on info, I can sort of hover through like this. So that's quite useful. And each sort of icon has got a different color. In, in relation to what it is. So for example, if you are in image, you want to change the image quality, image review, shutter release, lens um, aberration and flash control, those are all there. Um, and it's got like a sub menu. So you've got one, drive mode, you've got exposure, um, you've got white balance settings, you've got long um, high, uh, noise ISO settings as well, which is quite nice, so, you know, like your, ISO speed, for example. So that's quite nice. Again, if I click back on that button and click, go back to this 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 info button, I've got my Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. So if you want to connect your your um, DSLR to your um, smartphone, you can select select Bluetooth settings or Wi-Fi settings, and it's obviously got a nickname which you will connect to your um, smartphone. You will need the Canon um, Camera Connect app in order to be able to connect to the Wi-Fi and send pictures from your camera, um, sorry, from your DSLR to your smartphone, which is probably what a lot of people wanna do nowadays. Um, I know it's something that I would prefer to do, especially when you are sending images to, to clients, etc. You do really wanna send images via Bluetooth and sort of Wi-Fi straight away, really. So again, if I click on the menu, um, um, I, you can hover. You can hover through the sub menus like this using the dial over here as well. But you have to kind of go through each sub menu to get to the next menu. But if you click on info, you can sort of hover through it like this as well. So that's quite useful. Um, so I'm going to go back to menu, and this little icon here toggles through your shutter and your aperture. So. If I, if I click and hold that and pull this one in and out, it will change my shutter. And if I sort of let go, it will allow me to change my ISO. So that's a nice feature. So I can click on that and do that or do that. So that's quite nice. It's also touch screen. So if I click on the Q button, um, now this is touch screen. So I can click on each of these icons and change whatever settings I might be sort of going into. So that's quite useful as well. Um, I think with these sort of cameras, a lot of young people are going to be using them and really you want to sort of kind of be um you really want to be sort of kind of 
using the touch screen really because a lot of people are used to the touch screen now so that's probably what you will use if you click on this um, record button it will take you to a viewfinder and again you can click on these icons and change the shutter again click on that button there um, that one there sorry take you back your f-stop your shutter your, sh your aperture sorry so you can change your aperture and click on that one your exposure compensation, you can sort of move that around. Um, again, if I click back on that one, and your that one there is your ISO. So you can increase or decrease your ISO. And this camera goes all the way up to 25,600 ISO. So that's pretty high. Well, it's high. It's high for an entry-level camera, I would say. So that's quite useful. Um, so I'm going to go back to menu. Okay, so I've gone back to menu. Um, so I've got, you know, some settings there that I've just sort of played around with. If I click back on this button, it'll take me back to the, the main menu, which is obviously not with the visual. So I can sort of change various things on here as well. Um, up here, you've got your ISO button. So if you click on your ISO button, see what that does. Um, okay, so if I click on the ISO button, it'll take me to ISO so I can change my ISO from up here. If I click on display, it'll take me back to my display. Um, and again, I can sort of click on the Q button and go back to my main menu to change my ISO shutter, aperture and exposure and white balance, etc. So again, useful. Um, if I click on this icon here, it goes to my focal points. Now, this camera is, I think, a bit basic when it comes to focal points. You've got, um, you've got automatic focal points. So it automatically selects as many focal points as it can find. And if I click back on there, it's got your manual. So if I, if I go back to Q button, click on focus, uh, focus points, it's got my manual. So I can select, so I can select with the, with the wheel up here, different focal points that I might want to choose. So if you've got a subject that's moving around, maybe it's on a left or a right positioning in the, within the frame, I can select that focal point and take the picture. There we go. Um, and there you go, you can see it's selected there as well. Um, so yeah, nice features. Again, if I click on the Q button, I can go back to my main menu and I can change the file size, you know, large, small, etc. cetera. Um, so that again, very useful. That's my play button to see what pictures I've taken. That's my delete and I can just delete away. So yeah, overall guys, um, a nice little camera. Um, it's got some nice features, nice touchscreen features, which a lot of the new cameras like the R6, uh, Canon 5D Mark IV, I think has got it as well. Um, you know, a lot of Sony S, um, A7 III's. Um, you know, all these sort of Canon 90D, I think as well, have all got um, these touchscreens now, nowadays. Um, the body feels a little bit like a mirrorless in terms of the size um so it's not like your normal dslr with a big bulky body um it's really sort of quite light it's not a massive amount of weight on this so and it holds quite nice in the hand so if you're looking for an entry level camera that is decent not too expensive about sort of i think the range ranges from about three to about 450 in the uk pounds um Still, I think quite high expensive for what it is because you know there are cameras out there um, around about sort of eight nine hundred mark, which are high, you know have got better sensors. I would say a CMOS sensor, a lot better higher ISO, you know, four K filming. Um, so those sort of features are very useful. Um, but if you're looking for an entry level camera for maybe for just to get into photography and start off with, you know, it's not a, a bad little camera to get started. It's very easy to use. It's not difficult. Like I said to you, you've got your manual. Um, so if I switch it back on, you've got your manual. You've got your program modes. So they're all there for you to sort of snap away. Thank you for watching, guys. If you've got any questions, please do post. Um, if I'm going too quick on these videos, please let me know. I will slow down. You know, a few people have commented on my, some of the videos. I'm going a bit too quick. So I do try to slow down. I'm a quick talker. I can't help it. It is what it is. But thank you for watching. And I will see you for the next video. Adios.